What's up everybody? We're out here at the range today and we are gonna go through the process of sighting in your rifle scope to your rifle. Now the sight in process is probably obviously the thing that you're gonna wanna go through very first when you get a brand new optic on top of your rifle. We want the rifle scope to be pointed at the same place that the barrel was pointed at some certain distance. In this case, we're gonna be going with 100 yards. That's a very common sight in distance, especially for a rifle like this which we'll use in a combination of long range shooting as well as hunting applications too. But there may be different distances, 200 for example, 50, uh, it'll all vary on your application, but uh, in this case, 100 yard is very common. The sight in process and just generally shooting groups at 100 yards is also a process that you can go through at any time, even if it's not a brand new rifle scope on top of your rifle. For example, if you're going to be shooting in different locations than where you last zeroed, especially if it's at a higher altitude or a lower altitude, things like that will affect your ballistics and can affect your zero. So you'll wanna confirm at, you know, in this case again, 100 yards to make sure that you're shooting on. Never take your zero for granted, especially when things like that change. Now in this case, you can see we have the bolt removed from the rifle. That's because we just finished up the bore sighting procedure. And we actually have another video on how to properly bore sight your rifle scope to your rifle. It's just a good process to do before you even send any rounds down range to at least ensure that you're going to be putting rounds on paper or on the cardboard backer that you're shooting down there. Uh, you don't wanna send any rounds in a bad spot where you really don't want them to go or where you would never be able to see and reference them in order to make adjustments later. Now for a rifle scope like the Razer LHT, which I have here on this rifle, it has a parallax adjustment. And since again, we're shooting at 100 yards, we've adjusted that parallax adjustment to 100 yards. Parallax error certainly can come into play if it's not set just right. Your knob for your parallax adjustment may be on the side like it is here, or it may be up on the objective bell. Check for that. If you don't have one, it's likely that your scope is fixed at one certain distance and you wanna check the manual. It may be 50, it may be 100 yards. 100 yards tends to be common, but uh, there are a few outliers. Now another thing our Razer HDLHT here has is a zero stop in the elevation turret. Now zero stop is a really nice thing to have because as you're dialing out at distance, you're only gonna dial in one direction because gravity only works in one direction. And then when you dial back, a zero stop will prevent you from going beyond your zero. But in this case, since we haven't zeroed it in yet and since we don't know exactly where we're gonna be on the target, we've removed the zero stop or if you have another type of zero stop that requires you to unlock it in some form, you're gonna to want to disengage that zero stop. So that way your elevation turret can travel both down and up. As far as the target down range goes, we're not using anything really fancy or with a lot of vibrant colors all over it or a lot of intricate designs. We're using a simple, high contrast, small target down there and we're using paper as well with a cardboard backer so we can make small holes. This isn't to say that you can't zero in on steel, but shooting at steel causes a lot of splash and it makes it difficult to see exactly where your impacts are. So this is gonna help us be as precise as possible. And speaking of precise, of course, we, the shooter, come into play in this operation. So we wanna make sure that we are imparting as little influence on the shot as we can. You can see here that I have my rifle set up on sandbags. We're not even using a bipod like we might actually use out in the field because depending on whether you're on a concrete slab or on a bench, you can get bipod bounce uh, and that can influence your accuracy. We also have a bag at the rear that we're using just to keep the rifle as steady as possible. We're gonna take our time and we're gonna shoot five shot groups. If we're only shooting one round and then chasing it around the target, we'll never actually know what's happening. So shooting multiple rounds, taking your time, applying the fundamentals of marksmanship, that will really help. Now speaking of those sandbags I was talking about, a popular piece of equipment that many people will use to eliminate shooter error from this process is a weighted gun vise. And we actually discourage the use of that and we encourage using sandbags like this that allow the gun to recoil the way it was designed. We have a video on exactly why with an explanation that we'll link in the description below. Okay, so without further ado, that's all the explanations. Let's actually get to shooting. Again, we've bore sighted this, so now it's time that we're just gonna send some rounds down range and see what's happening. So right off the bat, this is where some people may wanna immediately start making adjustments because as you can see, our impact down range is high and to the left. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna keep aiming at the same spot. I'm gonna take more shots and finish out this group to make sure the rifle is shooting the way I expect it to be shooting. If it is, then we'll make adjustments.
All right, now we're down here at the target, and as you can see, like we were saying, we are shooting high and to the left, which is okay. We're gonna make our adjustments needed. Good thing is that we have a good consistent grouping here. It all fits pretty much within the size of the tip of my thumb, and uh, it's about three and a half inches high and about three and a half inches to the left, linear measurements wise. Now what we recommend doing is if you have an MOA or MRAD scope, your reticle should have some measurements in it of some sort that you can bracket to determine how many MOA or MRAD you need to dial into your turrets to get on target. This is the point we're aiming at, and hopefully we can get our impacts right down here. But you can do the conversion of linear units to MOA or MRAD. We are shooting an MOA scope. We know that one MOA is about an inch at 100 yards. So about three and a half MOA down and three and a half MOA to the right should get us just about in this X. Now, another thing you may have heard is that we are shooting suppressed out here. And just when I go back to the gun, I'm gonna make sure that the suppressor hasn't worked its way loose a little bit at all, or that the cover that we have over the suppressor hasn't gone over the suppressor in any way. That could affect our accuracy. So I'm gonna check little things like that and send another group down after we make our adjustments. All right, now our rifle scope turrets give us directional indications. So on the top of the turret here, we see up with an arrow pointing counterclockwise. And we see on our windage turret, right with an arrow also pointing counterclockwise. Since we need to go down and to the right, we're going to spin the turret clockwise for elevation, three and a half M away, and we need to go to the right, so we're gonna go that counterclockwise direction indicated by this right on the turret, three and a half M away as well. We are moving the points of impact. This particular rifle scope makes its adjustments in quarter MOA increments. Your scope may vary. It's something you wanna check in the manual. Certainly if it's MRAD, it will vary, but even if it's an MOA scope, it may not dial in quarter MOA increments. So check that and then adjust accordingly. Okay, so after our first round of adjustments, we can see that the scope responded very well and it got us really close, but this is the perfect reason why we do five shot groups. Let's say this shot right dead in the center of that X was our first shot and we would have just said, hey, we're good to go. If we're really chasing as close to perfection as we can get and that was it, we wouldn't have noticed that actually the bulk of our shots, maybe this one was slightly pulled or one of them was a flyer, but the bulk of our shots were a little bit to the right of the X. So we can actually go back now and make one or maybe two clicks back to the left to really get the bulk of them right in the center there. So uh, we're gonna do that, but again, the good news is consistent gun and scope that responds well to our inputs. All right, so we made that last adjustment, just one click to the left. And as you can see, the scope did respond to our input. And we are, if you average all these impacts out, pretty much right there in the middle. Now, I would have loved to be punching out that X, but the fact of the matter is, we're shooting a rifle with a hunting profile barrel, and we have a suppressor on the end of it on a really scorcher day to day. So uh, that's a recipe for a lot of heat to be built up in that barrel. And uh, you can start to have your group open up a little bit, or even have some slight shifts in POI as your barrel really starts to heat up. So we can go back and confirm that certainly at our indoor range at another time once everything cools back down. But really feeling real good about this in general. Again, the rifle shot really consistently today and the scope responded well to our inputs. And still at the end of the day, I mean, I can hold my thumb up and I can say that we are within basically the top portion of my thumb at 100 yards, which for a rifle again like this, that's a hunting rifle that we may do some long range stuff with on occasion. That's pretty solid. All right, now that the shooting portion of our sight in process is complete, there is still one more thing that we have to do. We input a lot of adjustments into both our elevation and windage turrets. And when it comes to actually shooting and dialing at different distances and such, we wanna be able to make those adjustments from a zero point on the turrets. And so in the case of the Razer HD LHT here, there's two flat head kind of button screws at the top of each turret that you can get out with a quarter or a flathead screwdriver. 
And those, once removed, allow you to lift up on the turret itself. And there is, in this case, a rubber O-ring seal. So there we go. Now, we also will install our zero stop. But again, your scope may or may not have the zero stop. But once that's done, we're just going to index this portion that your hand actually physically grabs onto to the zero and then push it back down. And we will do the same again with the windage turret. And as you pull them off, just be careful that you don't input any clicks or anything into the turrets that would, in theory, throw you off of the zero that you just got. But again, just index them onto zero, tighten them down, and you're set to go. All right, everybody, hopefully this video gave you the confidence to head to the range and sight in your own rifle scope on your rifle. As usual, if you have any other questions about this particular process or anything else shooting and optics related, let us know in the comments below. Shoot us an email, give us a phone call or social media message. We're always happy to help. 